take 30. I'm trying. I'm really, really trying to not stop and restart, but this is take 30 and it's a struggle, but I'm doing it. I'm doing the thing. Welcome to my floss tube channel. I am Sarah, the redneck bifocal stitcher. This is episode two. <laughs> Maybe this is why I haven't started a floss tube. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm sorry. If you are returning, thank you for giving me a second chance and coming back. Maybe I'll show you something that you'll like again and you'll say, okay, she's tolerable. We'll put up with it and her stitching is great. And if this is your first time, welcome. Um, I live on the type A side of life. I am a red, I am an ESTJ, I am a perfectionist. And let me tell you, it is so hard to deal with. Um, I'm a classically trained pianist and my piano teacher, Faith Moore, um, would constantly tell me, if you make a mistake while you're performing, don't stop and correct it, which is what I did. She's like, don't stop and correct it. Just keep going. Nobody's going to care and nobody's going to notice. Okay, sure, Jan. <laughs> I notice. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's built into me that if I make a mistake, I have to stop and correct it because there are people who are going to know that I've made a mistake and this is in my performing, but this is also applied to things in my life. Anyway, um, I feel like I have to stop and correct it so that I can prove to the people who know that I made a mistake, that I was aware that I made a mistake and that I know how to do it and do it the right way. Oh my gosh. It's horrible. This is horrible. It's horrible to live with this kind of perfectionism, but it is what it is. I know you guys appreciate me for what I bring to the table. I had so many comments telling me that what I did was just fine. <laughs> but to me, oh, I've, I've got to learn to deal with this. And I'm at the two minute and 30 second mark which means I'm coming up on my witching hour. Um, usually between three and four minutes is when I shut it off and restart. So if I'm on take 30 and I get about 30, three minutes in, you do the math, it sucks. I've been trying to tape this the better part of today because I've already taped a bunch of other things that I'm going to try and edit together for later. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, again, if you are coming back for the second time, thank you. If you are new, I hope I have some fun projects to show you. Um, everything you've probably already seen from 10,000 different people because I always seem to be late to the party. But I mean, I'm late to the floss tube party and it took me forever to get over carrying around two 100 CD cases and you know, those big flip books with the CDs in it. I didn't want to get an iPod. I thought, and I, nobody can take my CD from my cold dead hands. And here I am now, I have three iPods and I refuse to give those up. I have Spotify, but anyway, that's another story. So thank you for coming back. If you're new, welcome. Um, I'm doing my best. So thanks for putting up with that too. Um, I did make it to camp black needle society in kansas city and i had an absolute blast as to be expected um when you hang out with your friends in person that that you are used to seeing as talking heads on zooms and facebook um throughout the year you always make the most of it and um i had some pretty phenomenal table mates this year um some some new faces and some old faces and um it was just an absolute delight um i got to share an uber with stitching to connect annie from the airport and i hope i didn't like shock her with my uh, ginormous uh i don't know introduction to her like i just went right up to her and I'm like i'm a hugger and i gave her this big hug and um we had so much fun on our Uber ride to the hotel. It was about a 35, 40 minute drive and we had a great driver and just getting to know her. She is a delightful woman and oh, she's awesome. 
And I was bummed though, because my roommate, Jen, was having car issues and she wasn't gonna make it to camp this year. So I was really bummed to not be able to spend some time with her. Um, I took a shot last year by um, volunteering to be her roommate. She just put her feelers out and I was like, great, I need a roommate, let's do it. And Jen is one of my favorite people. All, all stitchers are my favorite people, I'm just gonna be honest. Chloe and Liz, the my two shout outs and, Everyone, um, you're all my favorite. Just putting that out there. So, um, lots of fun was had at camp. I, I'm not going to do an unboxing. Um, I feel like there's so many that are already out there that I don't want to be redundant. And I'm sorry if that's like uncouth or not up to like protocol or whatever that just because I'm a subscriber or I attend that it's kind of my responsibility. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I will. I just feel like there's already so much of it out there and people have those bases covered. So anyway, I'm just going to say that. I don't even see my little light up fan, which I love. <laughs> anyway, um, let's see. What else can I talk about? Um, I don't know. So let's just talk about cross-stitching. Um, I had some people ask on my last video, my first video, my only video, if I would show the stockings that I've made. And because most of them have already been completely finished and sent off, I have no way of getting them. Some are in Italy, some are in Florida. Um, my aunt has a couple, she's an hour away and um, some are in California. I, they're all over the world. So um, I have Rachel's stocking and Hannah's stocking, my, my girl's stockings, and then um, some stockings that I have finished and am waiting to have constructed into the stocking. And um, really quickly, my mom has been using my sewing machine for all of her quilting. And before I left for camp, I was gonna try just making the my smalls exchange into a little pillow. And I was like, I can sew a straight line. I can figure out how to make a pillow. And so I asked her um, if she knew where my sewing machine was because she just downsized and moved into a smaller house in a 55 plus community. And she said, oh, it's right here, but it's broken. And I'm like, okay, not a big deal. I can I can do something else, which I did. And it turned out great. And I have to say thank you to Renee of the Golden Familiars for helping me figure out how to do a, a very easy blanket stitch on the back of a hoop. I can do that now. I'm moving up in this world. But anyway, my mom felt bad that my sewing machine was in disrepair. So she bought me a new one. I don't even know how to sew. <laughs> she bought me a new sewing machine. It's nothing fancy. I know that much. Um, but... It's a sewing machine nonetheless. So with all of the stockings that I need to have completely finished, um, I figure this is probably a good time for me to learn how to sew because finishing is expensive, especially when you stack them on top of each other. I've got two that I'm working on, two that I'm still um, waiting to put beads on, and I've got two right here plus one. So I have seven stockings that I'm going to be needing finished. And you do the math and that's a lot of money. So it's time that I learn how to do things on my own. I can be a big girl. So anyway, um, let's get started. I uh, stitched, ooh, I even have, you guys, I even have, I got resourceful. Mine isn't as fancy as others but I did go buy some um, foam core board and a piece of felt. So I have my own little backer. Fancy. So the first stocking I have to show you is the stocking I made for my first daughter, Rachel. This is one of the Better Homes and Gardens designs. And I'm gonna try and keep this in focus and not have my voice too muted from talking behind the board but uh, my friend Janet Payne finished this for me. Um, she used this beautiful satin cording um, and then kind of something a little more elaborate on the top. She used a blue velvet on the back 
Um, this is a wire ribbon that I have to fluff up and curl with my finger or a pencil um, every year. And then on the inside is, a, if I can get it to focus, just some plain satin. But she finished this for me. Um, Rachel was born in the late 90s and I finished this in probably 2000, 2001. And this took me a long time just because oh, there's so much on this. I mean, you can see there is so much back stitching and there is so much detail. You come over to this side with the, oh, I'm sorry. I'm gonna try and keep this in focus on the stocking. This right here is one over, one over two back stitching on top of the two over two stitching of the window to give it this lace look to it. So that's essentially three strands of stitching. Um, you've got these this pretty border over here. Um, up top, you've got this little nativity set. Um, this was the first time that I had done a couch stitch. I think it's couch on the angel wings, or is it the halo? I can't remember. It's been a hot minute since I've stitched this. Um, but then you come over here to these two little motifs right here that are petty point, petite point. I don't know what the proper term is. Um, those two just about drove me to drink. Holy crap. It took me forever. And of course, because I didn't like the idea of stitching on mushroom, which is the fabric that it called for, I decided to just use a white fabric that I preferred and I didn't think about stitch count and how um, everything came into play. So yeah, I believe this is a 32 count instead of 25 that the pattern had called for. I think it was 25, I don't know. But you've got this cute little dollhouse and there's French knots all over inside of this dollhouse. You get to the dress and there's this really pretty um, stitching on top right here. There's some detail in this, um, the bow, more French knots on the doll in the stocking and these dolls on the bed and more dolls and teddy bears and kitty cats and all the things that you would find in a little girl's room. This one is sugar and spice and it took me forever, but um, I love it. Um, I've only stitched one other Better Homes and Gardens stocking, and that was Santa's Workshop, and I stitched that for my nephew, Nick, and he's just a year older than Rachel. And after I stitched Rachel's, I was like, okay, I've, I've done, I'm done. And for the longest time, that's all there were as far as family members. Um, but then I started making stockings for family in Italy and I have two cousins and those cousins have two kids of their own. So I stitched stockings for those four of my cousin's kids. And anyway, over time it's just built up again and people get married. And so I stitched a stocking for my niece's husband and my nephew's wife and both of them now have two kids. Two seems to be the number in my family. I have two. My sister has two. Anyway, um, so yeah, after I stitched this Better Homes and Gardens, I graduated to Shepherd's Bush because I found out about them and there were plenty and they still come out with new designs every year. And I've stitched almost all of them, but there's still room. So that being said, I stitched, when I had Hannah, I made a shepherd's bush stocking for her and comparing these two side by side, holy smokes. Um, have you seen these toilets? They're ginormous. <laughs> it's immediately what I think of. I'm so, I love Elf. <laughs> anyway, so Hannah's stocking is massive compared to Rachel's, but that's okay. It's not a sign of my affection.
my level of love for one over the other. It's not. So anyway, um, I don't remember the name of this stocking in particular, but the thing I love about Shepherd's Bush is they all have their own little charms and beads and buttons that you put on top of them. At the bottom, there's always a little, um, like a countryside or a little city scene. And then you have the main element with um, one or two bigger um, side pieces. And then you have a border at the top and then the name. And I love this one for Hannah. Oh, I'm trying not to let it focus on my face. So all these little charms right in here. That's a little bell. Um, you've got the buttons on the dress in her wings, a button on her hat and the halo, the bead halo with a loose bead. Oh my gosh. Um, anyway, this is Hannah's stocking. And then I um, just finished this stocking for one of my, I think this is my nephew's son. Everett. This is Everett's stocking. Um, again, I use the called for fabric. When you go to Shepherd's Bush, they have pre-cuts right there available. So you don't have to think about what size fabric you need or the type. You just go in and say, hey, I'm here to pick up um, some stocking fabric and there's a little basket chock full and everything is ready to go. It's great. So I go in. Here's this cute little village um, setting hillside and then I love this little reindeer with the newborn spots on it it has a little bell it looks like is that a bell nope it's a little heart charm there's a bell right here and then all of just these little other elements on it I love it And then I also stitched, and this is so sweet. My nephew, when he got married, texted me and asked if I would make a stocking for his wife. And of course I'm gonna say yes. So this is his wife's stocking, Lena. And I love this one. I love this stocking so much. I love this house and I love the detail in the dress. I think that is so cute. Your little hillside um, section, that tree with all the little things on it. Um, I love everything about this. This is a, what does it say? Oh, pardon me and my redneck bifocals. It says believe. It's a little charm that says believe. But I love everything about this. And I have, I have to put Charms on two more stockings, and I'll show you those next time. Um, but then this next stocking is something that, I don't know how I pulled it off, but I did. Um, I took, so l there's, let me tell you the backstory. My oldest sister, I have four sisters. My oldest sister, Lara, um, had cancer. She was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma when she was, um, seven or eight. I wasn't born yet, um, uh, in the mid seventies and she went through some of the worst types of chemotherapy. Her whole body is not cooperative in certain realms. Um, she has no kids. Um, and when she went into remission, my my mom actually found out that she went into remission because she was coding the chart. My mom was a medical coder and she was coding the chart and didn't realize that it was my sister's chart. So she inadvertently found out that my sister had gone into remission through work. Anyway, um, so she went into remission and then in the early 90s when she was in her 20s, she was diagnosed with thyroid cancer, which was um, related to the vincristine and 
um, the other chemotherapy that she had received. And so she had her thyroid removed and that cleared that up. And then in the early 2010s, she was diagnosed with kidney cancer and it was pretty bad. And so she had both kidneys removed and was on hemodialysis. Um, her husband is a respiratory therapist, so he's very familiar with a lot of medical things. And um, he learned how to do hemodialysis at home, so they were able to do that. And um, it came time for her to get on the transplant list. And Stephen, my brother-in-law, went and got tested. And he was the first person to get tested, and he was a match. Um, I'm still floored at that because that doesn't happen. Um, so as a way to say thank you in a, a strange way, I decided to make him a stocking and my sister asked if I would and I was like, well, of course. So I made him a stocking and this stocking comes from a raise the roof design called Scuba Duba and it's behind me in a box. I'm sorry, I don't have it for you to look at. Um, it's just so cute. So I photocopied it and cut different elements of this, the pattern and figured out a way to turn it into a stocking. And so this is it. Um, it had an alphabet along the top. So I took out his the letters of his name and used the alphabet that they had used for it. Um, this was one part, this wave with the dolphin. The sun was on it, the birds. Um, these, I wanna say they're tuna. They look like tuna. This octopus, these little school of fish minnows. The electric eel, I, that, I love that guy. He's one of my favorites. I think he's so cute. Um, the blowfish over here, this treasure chest the sea star, and then um, there's an anchor over here, and this would be my brother-in-law, Steve. And Steve um, and Laura live in the Tampa Bay area, and so they are big scuba divers. And um, Steve also breeds clownfish, and he attends, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's like this fish, convention every year and he's gone and it's really cool but anyway he breeds clownfish so I thought it would be fun to figure out how to chart two little clownfish and they are just right here with him and I I think I can get close enough will it I there we go there they are there they go <laughs> so anyway um again I've got to learn how to make stockings with my new sewing machine. Um, I'm going to practice a lot. I'll probably have 30 takes and we'll see how that goes. I just, I'm terrified at the idea of getting everything put together and starting to stitch it and make it into its stocking and then having some sort of catastrophic event happen and me losing the, the piece that's not gonna happen because I'm gonna practice 30 times. So anyway, those are the stockings that I have right now. I'll have four more to show you probably by my next video. Um, next up for my finishes that have not been framed, we have, um, what is this? New, New Year's Eve Fairy. This is a Nora Corbett design. This came all kitted up and I used the fabric that came in and I used the floss that came in the kit. Um, I love her. I think these are so fun. And even with the beading and how small they are, they're still so elegant. And um, they stitch up so quickly too. I love them. I don't know what else to say about it. I could point out all the things, but it's like, yep, I know that's a clock. Yep, I know that's her shoes. It's all so cute. <laughs> and from different angles of light, oh, she's really blingy. Even, even that little tiny thing. Um, next up is your A Grand Old Flag from 
with the heart needle art. I think um, her name is Wendy and she's in Idaho Falls. Um, I stitched this and when I kitted it up, the red that was called for was more orange and so I switched it to red. And now that I look at it, I'm like, mm, this blue is kind of more periwinkle. I would love to have a deeper blue. So I might frog all of that. It really doesn't take that long to stitch because these are words and it's not a whole lot of stitching to be honest. But I, I love these. I love patriotic things and that's as far as I'm going with that. Next up is Taurus from Nora Corbett. I'm telling you, I have a Mira Nora Corbett addiction. Um, I stitched this for Rachel, who is a Taurus. And uh, when she was releasing all of these Zodiac girls, oh my gosh, they're so gorgeous. And I would stitch them up just so that I could have them stitched. I don't know what I would do with them, but... I thought Rachel would really like this. I hope she likes it. <laughs> if not, I'll keep it, whatever. Um, anyway, all of these beads, oh, it's just so gorgeous. I love her beading, the colors that she chooses and her design aesthetic is just right up my alley. You know, there's authors whose books you'll buy without thinking twice, Stephen King, um, Ann Patchett, who else is an automatic buy for me? Lisa C. Um, Nora's, uh, Nora's pretty much on that level. Anyway, um, next up is Hive Rules. I stitched this last year and I actually did my own conversion on this. I'm gonna scoot back just so that you can get as much of it in the picture as possible. I know everybody knows what it looks like, but um, I, I actually did do my own conversion on this. I just took all of the DMC and uh, at Shepherd's Bush and she's got all of the weeks and crescent colors right there. And so I just took one skein of the DMC and turned around and found what matches closest and did my own little conversion. So you can see there's some variegation in, oh, let me see trying not to let it focus on my face. Right here you can see some of the variegation. You can see some variegation in the bees wings. I love how this turned out. Some of these do have two colors charted, but with the variegation it gives it even a little bit more. Um, these hives, the flags. I love this. Absolutely love this. I love primrose. Their designs are so pretty. I love all the bees. Um, yeah, what can I say? A lot of people like them. I do too. And then I found this really cool um, charcuterie board at Target that's massive. And I thought, ooh, this might work. So again, I, these ideas that in my mind they work, but we'll see if it translates. Um, I bought some foam core board and I'm gonna try mounting this on the foam cord foam core and then putting it on this huge walnut um, charcuterie board to see if that'll work and hopefully it does. In my mind it does. So anyway, um, next up is Mary Yuletide from Brenda Gervais. Yes, with a needle. Um, this is the Shepherd's Bush conversion. They switched Santa's jacket coat to red. Um, I love the primitive nature of this. I love that he's pulling a wagon and not a sled and there's a snowman in his sled. And um, the original chart has a quote along the bottom. I think it's just into all a good night. I can't remember. Um, but the way Terry stitched this and had Jill Rensel frame it. I loved it. The The mat is kind of asymmetrical and 
Um, she painted, uh, well, of course she painted on it, but she painted And To All A Good Night on that. And I love the way it worked out. And so um, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So I'm going to have mine finished just like Terry's. <laughs> It is what it is. What can I say? I like it and I'm gonna do it. Uh, next up is a Bent Creek. This is snow and I stitched this on the fabric that came in a Black Needle Society uh, murder mystery box. Um, there's some spatters on this fabric that you can see if you're holding up a black light and I thought this was a great color to stitch this design on. Um, the called for fabric is kind of a taupe. And so a lot of the letters that are that um, ecru color, like the G-H-I, J, those were blending into the fabric. And I thought, well, that's not gonna work. So I did a little floss toss and realized this would work perfectly and it does. So it's just a matter of getting that to the framer. And then next up is a Silver Creek Samplers um, Flying Lessons. This came in a Black Needle Society box. I can't, trick or treat, one of the trick or treat boxes. I'm pretty sure. Oh, my mind, I'm sorry. I should, I should know these things more. Um, but this is Flying Lessons and I think it's so adorable. I love the colors that she used for the charting. I've seen some people change the green to a purple, but I like it the way it is. I think these bats are so cute because they're freaking bats. I love Halloween. And um, yeah, I am trying to think of how I want to finish this. I could frame it, but it's small enough that I could do like a little flat fold and figure out where to put it. The tricky thing is, um, it's just so dusty here in Utah and with canyon breezes and desert dirt, um, things get dusty really easily and very frequently. So I usually frame it and get everything covered in glass, but whatever. Um, anyway, and so I can flat fold that. I don't know, whatever. I'm just thinking out loud and I'm 32 minutes in and I would stop and restart. But again, this is take 30 and I'm trying to do better. So here we are. Um, next up is Ghost Stories from the Witchy Stitcher. This also came in a Black Needle Society box and I'm stitching this on the fabric that it is called for. The fabric was included in the box. And when I started stitching it, I realized, oh my gosh, I have so much selvage. I could have stitched three of these and had plenty of fabric left over, but that's okay because I don't know what else I would stitch on this. Um, I could do like, I could cut this part off and do some really cute um, bookmarks or I could do some sort of little silhouette shadow piece. I mean, that's a big piece of fabric, but let's look at the stitching and the design because that is so freaking cute. Um, this was my first witchy stitch completed project and I have done more and will continue to do so. And I wish I knew the name of the fabric. I wanna say it's a Be Stitch Me or a Forbidden, but I could be grossly wrong and I don't wanna make anybody angry. So there it is. Um, next up is um, my second Plum Street finish ever. This is Hello Summer and I, Oops, I love all of these little seasonal hello and goodbyes that she has designed. Um, I just think they're cute. They stitch up pretty quickly. And again, I am trying to think of how I can finish this. Um, it would be a cute pillow. I could use my sewing machine for that. I can sew a straight line and figure out how to make it not look so weird. I don't know. Um, next up is Teacher Row from Bent Creek. And 
I stitched this up a long time ago. Um, Rachel was in second grade. <laughs> I just haven't gotten it framed yet. I love all of the Bent Creek rows. I think they're adorable and you'll see, um, I taped some of my framed finishes that I'm gonna tack on to the end of this video. And I've got more Bent Creek rows to show and even more after. Um, what I'm doing is I'm taking down my summer stuff and I'm putting up Halloween and I'm just showing those two. I have so many finished pieces. I don't wanna bombard everybody with like a 10 hour, here's what I've done and here's how it framed and here's what I've done and everything. So I'm putting it in pieces because that is one big old elephant. So this is teacher row. I didn't use any charms or buttons with this one. Um, I just thought it was cute. I did make one for one of Rachel's teachers. And then I realized, you know what? This is probably something they wouldn't like. I could be very wrong. Um, but I don't know. So I stitched another one and thought, I'm just going to keep this one and use it for fall decoration, which, you know, has been really great because Rachel's 25 and this has been sitting rolled up in a drawer for a while, <laughs> a, a minute. Um, and Hannah is in a new school, in a new grade. And it was really cool because I was reading her teacher's little handout with a, here's all about me. And what is her teacher? She is a cross stitcher. So I don't know, maybe I will stitch a new one and give it to her. Um, but until then, this is gonna get rolled back up and thrown in the drawer and what happens with it remains to be seen. I'm the only one who does this. Everyone else who's watching, you guys are so good about getting yours finished and done and everything. So anyway, um, the last video I talked about frog warts and I showed you the three whips that I have. And this year I put my nose to the grind and I actually finished it. So here is frog warts year four. And my favorite motif is the Bobaton's carriage. <clears throat> I love the colors of this. I think it's so pretty. Did I use? No, I didn't. I only used um, Krynik in the dragon egg right here in the middle. I used, well, I used some Krynik and some DMC metallics. Um, I think I will go over some other parts and with like a blending filament just to give it a little bit of extra um, blingy bling. I did use some DMC metallics on the Goblet of Fire right there. It's really hard to pick up though. But there are metallics there, but the Bobaton Carriage is my favorite. And um, I did get my 100 points. And I will point out, this is my other favorite part. I am not a Twilight fan by any means, but I thought it was funny that everyone was stitching Dedrick or Sedward, and um, I stitched him with um, a metallic because vampires are sparkly, and I thought it was funny. So, year four, and I found the little piece of paper that had the information on this. So this fabric is a 32 count, picture this plus, and the name of it is Heartland pretty sure. Heartland. Next up is a heartstring samplery. I, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is heartstring samplery. It's just a little, a small, and I saw this, um, as an ornament at Shepherd's Bush, and I thought this was so pretty, and it would be a good project to figure out how to make into a pillow or an ornament or a flat finish. So all the called for on a pre-cut piece of fabric that they had ready to go. And this, uh, I believe, is stitched two over one. But it's really pretty. I just really like that. The holly bears the crown. Um, and then next up is, <clears throat> excuse me, um, this is from Friend Stitch. They did a Christmas box and this is one of the designs they included. I love the little tree and the different um, 
patterns that they have. I don't know how else to say it. Um, and then there's an alphabet that goes along with this, another piece that's about this big and it has an alphabet. And there were a few other things that they included in that box. And I've done two of the friend stitch boxes. Those were really, really fun. Um, and yeah, that was kind of my introduction into the whole concept of a stitchy box until I did Frogwarts. And maybe, maybe this came before, maybe it didn't. I don't know, I finished this in 2020. So around the same time, maybe. Anyway, and then the last of my unframed finish objects, a UFFO, is Pretty Little Seattle. And I stitched this after going on vacation to Seattle with my best friend, Alicia. And we stayed at a hotel that was right near this building, the Smith Building. Um, we went to almost all of these locations and um, the library was open. This was in 21, mid 21. So there were still a lot of um, restrictions with COVID and everything. The library was open and there was a geocache that I wanted to go inside and get because I am a geocacher as well, which we'll talk about that later. Um, but I wanted to go in and get it, but I couldn't because they were only allowing card holders. <laughs> the library was being exclusive with their admissions. So if you were a card carrying member, you could get in. And I unfortunately was not. So no geocache for me, but I did get to see the library. We went up into the top of the um, Space Needle. Um, what else? The Pacific, um, this, the Pacific Center, I can't remember its official name. That was closed when we were there, but we did walk around and we got to go into the um, Cultural Museum, the Rock and Roll Culture Museum, whatever it was. I don't know. It was fun. I loved it. And I'm a 90s girl, so that was right up my alley. But um, anyway, that's all of my UFFOs. And what I've done is I've got a bunch of little videos that I'm gonna try and tack onto the end of this. I think I figured out how to make it, how to make it work. And if so, then there will be more and hopefully you'll enjoy what I have to show. I will only do um, summer and autumn and then once I switch my autumn stuff out for Christmas, then I'll do another um, finish parade for that. So thanks for stopping by. And um, maybe I'll close out with another little video at the end. I don't know. But enjoy the rest of um, my work. This is American Sampler from Plum Street Samplers. I finished this in June of this year. And I kitted it up at Craft Center of Fine Stitchery in Salt Lake City. I used Jamie's color conversions. There weren't very many substitutions. Most of note is the red in this quilt star. I love the variegation of that. I just think it's a really rich, rich um, color. So I chose to use that. And I think there were maybe some modifications on the grass but again, nothing that was super extreme. Uh, I don't know the fabric that I used. Um, some of you might know it just by looking at it, but um, what was called for, she didn't have available, so I substitute it, and I actually really like this. It gives it a really parchmenty look, and um, I don't want something in this style to look new. Does that make sense? And that's also why I chose the frame that I did. I think Betty at Art City Frame Company did a bang up job with um, suggesting this frame for me. Um, I stitched this, it is a 36 count, and I stitched it one over two. And if you follow me on Instagram, I was talking a lot about the grass 
<laughs> and there's a scene in Sleepless in Seattle where Meg Ryan is driving in the car somewhere and a Christmas song is playing and it just keeps saying horses, 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 horses. And that's what it felt like stitching this grass. It was just never ending. Um, but I do love me a big house and this sampler is just gorgeous. I love it so much. Okay, next up is Bent Creek's flag. I love Bent Creek so much. Most of the pieces that I've stitched are Bent Creek um, for smaller pieces it, because I've got to have something in the middle of all my mirrors to break up the, not, not in monotony, but um, I just need a sense of accomplishment because stitching big piece after big piece after big piece gets kind of tedious and discouraging, especially when you don't have a finish. Um, I use the called for flosses, probably the called for fabric. I just love the simplicity of these. Um, the variegation kind of comes through and I think I stitched this in 2010. I don't know if there's any kind of indicator on there. But anyway, um, I keep this up in the craft room, or I should say the room of creativity, and then I pull it down um, for summer months, and I'm just getting ready to put everything away, which is why you get summer and autumn slash Halloween. Next up is Uber Flag from Bent Creek. I stitched this on an 18 count piece of fabric. Um, using all of the called for Week Style Works Pearl 5 cotton. And I love the different designs in the red bands. I think it gives it a nice little touch, gives it a little bit of depth. Um, I love all of these Uber patterns as well. They're big, but they stitch up just super quickly because there isn't a lot of changing in the um, floss. And this is a really delightful series. I have stitched all but I think one of the Ubers, as you will see kind of in my whip, not whips, but my FFO parades to come. This is Stars and Stripes Forever from Bent Creek. I used everything called for, and I think I stitched this back in 2019, 2020-ish, maybe, maybe sooner than that. Um, my frame, I will say, is from Art City Frame Company in Springville, Utah. We lived in Springville for about 18 years before moving um, to where we are now. And I will take my stuff to Art City as long as I can. Um, Betty does a fabulous job. I can trust her with my linen and my work. I know she's not going to cut anything. She's not going to glue anything. She's not going to, to use any kind of adhesive that can compromise, um, my fabric or my flosses. And, um, I know she pins and has taught all of her assistants to do the same. Um, there are quite a few stitchers who take their work to Art City Frame Company. And like I said, I will continue to go there as long as I can. It's even to a point now where I can give um, a piece to Betty, tell her what I want, and then she sends me you know, five or six different options, lets me choose and um, go from there. And everything always turns out so spectacularly. Okay, this is Patriotic Row from Bent Creek. I stitched this back in 2005, so I really couldn't tell you what fabric this is stitched on. If it's not exactly what the pattern called for, then I found something as similar as possible. Um, I always use the same stitch count just so that I have the same outcome as far as design size. Um, there's only been a few cases where I've used a smaller count of fabric or I've stitched it uh, one over one instead of two over one. Um, yeah, 2005. I know I did this to break up the monotony of mirrors and big projects that I had started working on. Okay, here comes all my Halloween stuff. I love stitching Halloween. Halloween is my favorite next to Christmas. And um, I have to ex exercise a lot of self-restraint when it comes to kidding up Halloween stuff. I love it all. Anyway, um, this is Trick or Treat. This was a le leaflet um, published by Shepherd's Bush. I stitched this back in 2010. I did buy the packet that included all of the just another button company buttons with it. They've got 
two little pumpkins, a skull, this um, tombstone with a freaking bat on top, and then some stars to go along with it. I love this little spider too. I love how they, ooh, focus. I love how they have you stitch over the top of it to secure it and keep it down. I thought that was really clever. And I don't know why my phone keeps going in and out. Anyway, um, yeah, Shepherd's Bush, having them as my local needle workshop is a blessing and a curse because Tina and Terry have so much on display. If you have been lucky enough to go, you'll, you'll understand. You go in and it is sensory overload of the most sublime type and they have everything you could possibly want there fabric and floss and buttons and all the little things. Okay, this is Halloween Queen from Not Forgotten Farms. Um, I believe I changed a few things based off of the Shepherd's Bush conversions because like I've said, I can't do it myself. I saw her stitched and fell in love with her the second I saw her. I love these colors. I love the variegations, how they change. Um, her dress is gorgeous. Um, the colors in her lettering, gorgeous. The variegation in the floss I used on her head is gorgeous. I love everything about her. This frame from Art City Frame Company is perfect. Everything about her is perfect. I love her. I love her. I love her. This is In Search of the Perfect Pumpkin from Heart and Hand Designs. This is, um, I think, the first heart and hand that I had stitched. Um, I kitted this up at a now closed store. It was located off of 53rd South in um, Salt Lake City. And the name of the store was Stitch and Station, I want to say. It was a cute little cottage that was in the middle of this huge commercial area. And they went out of business quite some time ago. And that building still stands, but it is also still vacant. Um, I think what drew me to this design was all of the di different specialty stitches. You can see in the leaf, um, there's some specialty stitches, this pumpkin in the leaves of the sunflower, in the border, and I had no idea what I was doing. So, if you see mistakes, um, I will chalk that up to me being self-taught and not having anybody to ask for help. <laughs> Specialty stitches down here. I mean, just a cute pattern all over. But then you get in close and you see just exactly how awesome it is. This is Little Witch from Shepherd's Bush. This is a kit and I believe it's still available. I saw it on their website. Um, so everything is included, the fabric, the floss, the button, and I believe they used um, Overa Soie silks with this. And if you get really, oh, sorry. If you get really close, you can see um, the specialty stitches along the bottom. I love that they throw those in in all of their different um, kits and in some of their leaflets as well. The words on it say spooky moon, starry night, witches glee, pumpkins fright. This is Into the Night from Shepherd's Bush. This is another one of their kits. Um, I stitched this in 2010, it looks like. And um, like I said, this is a kit, so everything came with it. Um, these are silks as well. And there are two little Jabco buttons along the bottom. That gravestone and the pol polka dot pumpkin that's sitting on top of the fence on the right. This one says, come along into the night, shivering in happy fright. Um, I'll show you. Here are all the different specialty stitches that they have in their border. I love stitching Shepherd's Bush because it gives you um, some new stitches to try out. They do a lot of this satin stitching. I think that's what it's called along the bottom with those triangles. 
Um, I love that purple, but my favorite section is this right here, just with the checkerboard and then that chevron. I think it's adorable. Can you guys hear that overhead? I've had to stop recording so many times because it gets so loud with the planes overhead. Um, I will say this is um, a daily thing. We live 10 miles away from Hill Air Force Base, and so we get just random flyovers um, when they go west to the desert to do all their maneuvers and war games and whatnot. Um, I grew up uh, right next to Camp Pendleton in Oceanside, California, and we used to hear all the, the it sounded like thunder. And as a kid, we'd run outside and be like, it's raining, it's thundering. No, they're just playing war games. So anyway, this is Apple Kissed Autumn from Shepherd's Bush. And I can't remember if this is a kit or if this is a leaflet. Um, I had to search back into my Instagram archive because I couldn't find it on their website under kits or leaflets. But this is Apple Kissed Autumn. And I have to show you the frame. I love this frame. It's perfect. It makes me feel kind of like a barn door type thing. Anyway, um, you get into it and you see all these little specialty stitches along the border. Rows of crows, ripened vines, apple baskets, autumn signs. And then at the bottom, you've got um, beads for the apples and this cute little squirrel charm. And then, of course, in true Shepherd's Bush fashion, you've got specialty stitches all along um, each of these little border motifs, some black work, some satin stitches. I just think this is so cute. And this was another quick one to stitch up in the middle of all of my stuff. And I know I um, did this in the middle of working on some different stockings from Shepherd's Bush. Oh, I love this guy. This is Uber Jack from Bent Creek. This is the first of the Uber series that I stitched. And I love him so much. Um, this is stitched on an 18 count. I know I used the called for fabric and uh, used the Pearl 5 Cotton Weeks Dye Works and um, DMC. I stitched this back in 2011. And I love him so much. He's so freaking cute. And that little cat on the top. I mean, what else can I say? All of these Ubers are so freaking cute. Okay, this is one of the Lizzie Kate um, three-part mystery samplers uh, that they had released. I think there's one other Halloween, maybe there's two. Anyway, um, I know I stitched this on a picture, this plus fabric, and I wanna say that it's ale. Do they have a, an ale option? I don't know, and I'm sorry, my reflections are in there. But there's really no good time to, to film when you've got glass. I can do it at night and then you see everything. I can do it during the day and you see a little bit, but then you have windows behind and windows on the side and things get tricky. But anyway, I love, 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 love this, this design. Um, I stitched it in 2019, as you can see. And I love this little goopy glob guy. Maybe it's a frog, I don't know, coming out of the cauldron. These keys, that pumpkin with the vine. Witch and Ghost Make Merry on this last of Dear October's Days. It is a Lizzie Kate, and I love it so much. Okay, this is Pumpkin Stew from Shepherd's Bush. This did come as a leaflet, and you can buy the Mill Hill buttons separately. Um, and like I said before, they have everything packaged up behind the counter if you want to get it. Or they've got all these button drawers that you can pick out if you want to do something different. Um, you've got a star button up here. Then you've got the ghost and the cat and the witch. There's a pumpkin here at the bottom and a crow at the very, very bottom. I love the sunflowers and all the different aspects. The candy corns. You've got I don't know, are those candles, flowers, something, um, freaking bats, and then the spiders up above. 
and it says, On a clear and starry night, Halloween is such a fright. Witches roam and goblins too, then home to bowls of pumpkin stew. Oh my gosh, it's a Bent Creek Row. You don't say. <laughs> anyway, this is Trick or Treat Row from Bent Creek. I use the called for fabrics and the called for flosses, all the things. Um, when I went to get this framed at Art City, I knew I wanted to do something different. So I asked Betty if she would do um, an orange under coat and then top it with a black and then give it this distressed look so that you have the, the orange coming through. And I was really, really happy with how this turned out. I was worried that what I had in mind wouldn't translate correctly and it did. And I'm so excited. Um, this was stitched in 2018. I love all the different variegation. I use the called for flosses, obviously. So this turned out really cute and I just love how simple these are, how quick they stitch up and the result that comes from it. These are so cute. Next up is by the pricking of my thumbs, something wicked this way comes from uh, La Di Da. And I used the called for everything, even the fabric. I love the color of the fabric. And I have seen um, other conversions of this and they are so adorable using purples and oranges for the socks and changing up the coloring of the, the letters. I like it the way it is. I stitched this one in 2009 and then there's also this one which is double double toil and trouble fire burn and cauldron bubble from la di da with the same fabric um, and I have seen this one stitched differently as well I love it as is this just used um, DMC flosses it would be cute if you added um, maybe some spider buttons maybe some bubble buttons. Is that even a thing? But both of these are so cute. Okay, and I'm including this with my Halloween finish parade, even though this isn't what I would consider Halloween. This is an everyday piece for me. Um, this is Well Clarice Have the Lamb Stop Screaming by the Witchy Stitcher. I stitched it on a 32 count piece of chocolate milk from Fabrics by Stephanie. I knew that this was just the perfect fabric for this design. And I used all of the called for colors. I did take out um, two elements that she had put in to the wings just because I wanted to preserve the beauty of the moth itself. Um, the frame is from Art City Frame Company, as I mentioned before. And I had showed Betty a picture of my whip. And she said, oh my gosh, I have the perfect frame for this. And of course, I knew that this was it when I saw it, despite the sticker shot. Because, I mean, looking at the frame and the details, you know that this is going to be an expensive frame. But it is gorgeous and it is absolutely perfect. So when I went to get this framed... Um, I tried a couple other options just to see, and there was there there wasn't there wasn't any other option. This was it, and I had no problem spending that much on this because, um, like with bees, I stitched this as a way to remember an aspect of my dad, <laughs> which is so. Oh my gosh! Okay, let me tell you the story. I watched this when I was fifteen. 1992, I was 15, yeah. Um, I watched this with my cousin and we were scared out of our minds. And we were so freaked out, we didn't even want to get up to walk across the room and turn off the VCR. <laughs> it was so scary. Anyway, um, my dad was in federal law enforcement and he would go out of town and would lock his office. He had an office in the garage. But there were times where he would leave and he would forget to lock the door. And my younger sister and I would go absolutely crazy because that's where he kept his CDs and the movies that he didn't want us to have access to at any time. So in the drawer were like the Thorn Birds and Cannery Row and just movies that he felt we shouldn't be watching. 
And of course, I always took out Silence of the Lambs and would watch it because I love this movie. And I read all of the books in the series and the relationship between Hannibal Lecter and Clarice Starling is nowhere near as developed in the movies as it is in the books. And oh my gosh, you guys are going to think I'm weird, but Hannibal Lecter loved Clarice and she loved him, but it wasn't a romantic love. It was just a beautiful freaking relationship. Anyway, don't at me, read the books, then you'll know what I mean. Anyway, um, so when I stitched this, I stitched it in memory of my dad for the times that he left his office unlocked and I would sneak in and take the VHS tape out and watch it. And then I would have to make sure that I would cue it back to the right moment where the tape had been stopped. That way he wouldn't figure out that I had gone in and taken it <laughs> because back then that's what she did. Okay, it's time for me to get off the floor now. <laughs> um, but here's a preview of some of my future stitching that you guys haven't seen just yet. Oh, there's more Ubers right there. But anyway, um, thanks for coming along and I will see you at the end of the month.